Massachusetts. Yes, uh, another like he was from uh, Northville area, and uh, Jr. Uh, grew up uh, playing, I think, at Meadowbrook uh, a lot, and then he became a professional, and he's become remarkable. Uh, uh, he kind of blossomed just a little bit later, I think, uh, in winning the championships. Yeah, he did. He kind of he was he was like in his late 30s and 40s when he became a dominant player, and. Uh, you know, and, and really, he's still a really good player. He's in his 50s and and uh, just a, a little bit of a different guy, kind of kind of quiet and yet really confident, a, one, a great putter. I mean, he could really putt. And uh, and you knew when his putting stroke was on, it really didn't matter where he hit his drive because he was going to get it somewhere near the green and he was going to make the 12-footer. So, you know, you weren't out of the hole. And, uh, and, uh, and it, you know, nice man. He's always been really nice to me. I still talk to him every once in a while. I see him at tournaments and... He he's tied with Watrous and Hebert. They both they all three have 15 majors in the Michigan section now. So he and, still and, really and wants that, but he only gets one chance a year. It's the Tournament of Champions. So he he comes back and tries to win that every time. But of course he's got to beat Hebert and he's got to beat everybody else who shows up for that too. Talking talking about the uh, Michigan Open uh, and uh, J.R. Roth, who spent his growing up years at Meadowbrook. <laughs> Took a lot of paychecks home. He took a lot of paychecks. Sure, sure. As a matter of fact, I uh, I still communicate with him. He's out in near, uh, not in, in New Mexico now. So uh, yeah, yeah. He was quite a player. Funny story on him that uh, when we went spikeless, or when, not spikeless, but what, what we called it spikeless. So I'm just going to keep calling it spikeless. Uh, Stephen Kircher came to me we were playing the tournament of champions in a couple events up there at boy at Boeing, yeah and he he said to me that uh he would like to sponsor a tournament and he would put up x thousand dollars if they would go with this new spikeless thing okay so you know the dollar signs clicked i said i i can he said do you think you can make it happen you think those guys will do it i said we'll just make it they can't tee off unless they do it so i had to go home and sell that and believe it or not, I sold it to Jack Seltzer, who went in to win a couple of those things. So we did do that, and I'll never forget Roth and somebody else stood up at this at our at our section fall meeting, spring meeting, and said that I was going to get blamed for killing some of the players. <laughs> they said I'm going to go to jail. Some of the players are going to get killed out there, and Roth would never go fully spikeless. He would leave one spike in, and I couldn't throw him out of the tournament for one spike. But he he wouldn't, you know, he wouldn't give in that it was the way to go. And I drove across the bridge at, out here at Western, and the sign is still up there: "Careful walking across the bridge with soft spikes." And they haven't taken it down. But yeah, okay. So Jr. and uh, and how about uh, Scott Hebert? Scott Hebert is uh, the man. The man from Escanaba who. Uh, came down to the lower peninsula and is dominated he was he i remember when he was a valet parking my car when i would go up there all right grand at grand traverse yep at grand traverse yeah right right and i used to kid him every time i'd give him a winner's check i say take this money go play the tour and leave our pa our purse alone venues for the uh, michigan open over the years oh tremendous venues and you know the, he was in J and jr won in at the bear which is kind of the golden era there were you know 26 of them i think in a row there and uh at that resort 23 on the bear and uh and the bear was just you know the paul nine the original developer said Jack Nicholas built me the hardest golf course in Michigan, you know, the hardest golf course you can make. And, and Jack didn't really want to, but he did it. And uh, and when it first opened with the tall grass, and I know you kept a best ball that first yes. time. It was, <laughs> it was that. like 81, 82 or something like yeah, that. Yeah, it was, I mean, that was, that was the worst ball, right, yeah, the, worst yeah, ball. the worst ball. And there were huge scores. Well, JR made a 12 on, on the fourth hole in his one of his Michigan Opens, and he ends up being in the Hall of Fame, and he won it. So anybody can make a 12, so don't give up if you make a 12.